right guys got another project in that's quite interesting for you um this is a Vauxhall vxr8 and the rest of the world will know it as a holden so Vauxhall imported a whole bunch of monaros and uh commodores and stuff over the years with ls1s twos and threes and, and the latest version i think it was an lsa so they're quite rare to find in this country this particular one's an ls3 6.2 liter you can see there, it's even got the original HSV uh, plate on it. But unlike uh, most of them, this one's had, if you look down here, right down the bottom, I don't know if you can see that from here, a pair of turbos. So this is a twin turbo LS3. Now I've tuned a few LSs over the years. I've done a few supercharged ones, but this is my first turbo project. So it'll be interesting to see how this goes. Um, we've just literally swapped in some uh, 90 pound injectors and we fit a larger map sensor so it'll be interesting to see how we get on with this. I need to calibrate them and we can get the thing started up and see how it goes. So for tuning the uh, LS engines, we actually bought in a special piece of kit for them called the EFI Live. It's one of two really popular tuning systems that are used to tune factory GM ECU, such as the LS engine at ECU. This one is a particular is a E38 ECU. Uh, we're just flashing it now with the uh, stock map basically, but with the map sensor calibrated, the injectors calibrated, and then also changing the fuel system to be a map reference fuel system because we've now got a vacuum line to the fuel rail, fuel regu uh, regulator rather, should I say, um, where the stock car doesn't use a map reference and just flashed. So the question is will this car I want to fire up? go so what we do we can come back into here these are just my first sort of speculative values to try and get the injectors dialed in they might not be perfect first time but we'll give it a good go we have a look at the EFI scan tool if we connect up to a uh, E38 there we are GM V8 ECU and we can pull all sorts of information out of the ECU so you can pick out what are various different uh, PIDs from the ECU. But let's just start monitoring here. Yeah, continue. Dashboard. Idling good. Fuel trims. A couple of percent of fuel trim there. Map sensor. There's a vacuum of minus 60 or 40 absolute. That's about right. And when we open the throttle. There we go. Excellent. So that's got the car working. We've started. Next session, we need to pop the dyno and uh, actually try and tune it. Now, I haven't decided how I'm going to tune this because the uh, the ECU actually has a, a math sensor on there, but the math sensor is in a position that's now under boost, and I'm not sure how the math sensor is going to respond to boost. The other option is to switch the ECU onto a speed density setup because this ECU has the ability to run both a speed density and math. We could just take the uh, math away and run speed density. So I've got a few percent on fuel trims there, so a little bit of dialing in to do. It's, uh, this is EFI Live, and it's, uh, it's a good system for getting into these LSE ECUs. Another popular one is HP tuners, but uh, effectively we are we are in, we are running. <laughs> So we finished up our first dyno session. Got the car on the dyno here. And once we managed to dial everything in, we've managed to arrive at 600 horsepower basically at gate pressure. So we've had to disable the MAF and we've put it into a speed density mode. Uh, what else we've we done? We've put the fuel system back to being a uh, static pressure. We're having some issues with the fuel pressure not being able to um, hold with boost. Um, it's probably something to do with the way the customer's implemented his uh, map-based uh, fuel pressure system. It's not like a regulator on the fuel rail, it's a regulator at the back of the car with a vacuum line back and forth, and it's a bit, a bit problematic. So we've just reversed it back to a standard-style fuel system. Because the injectors are so big, we can cope with the amount of boost this car's going to have, which is going to be less than one bar. Um, what else have we done? So the injectors themselves, for example, they're, they're a 90 pound injector, 960 cc. The ECU itself can't handle an injector that big. It kind of sort of runs out of calculation around about sort of 60 pound injectors, if not that. 
Um, so we've had to do some tricks in the ECU to calibrate them as basically 45 pounds. And then we doubled the stoichiometric ratio the ECU runs from 14.7 to 29.4, I want to say. Um, and it just tricks the maths in the ECU to basically count bigger injectors and run properly. You know, the lambda targets are still the same. We're not bodged lambda targets. It still runs lambda one closed loop. It still enriches to like lambda 0 0.75, 0 0.78 or whatever. Um, it's just the stoichiometric number that's normally used to calculate the air, air to fuel ratio. That's been doubled and then the injector flow size has been halved. And so the two counteract to basically give you the same result. And it works around a limitation in this ECU. Uh, so we're going to try and wind a bit more RPM into it. I'm going to try and uh, go for a little bit more boost. These turbos are only little, so I'm not sure how much more boost they'll give top end because they'll probably run out of puff. But not much more power, maybe maybe mid 600 somewhere around there. They'll run out of puff. So we'll see what we get on, and uh, I'll update you soon. <laughs> finished up the tune on the VXR8 and it was kind of what I expected top end power was just limited by the size of the turbos um, adding more boost you know an over boost sort of 10 12 psi just fine in the mid-range we can get 700 foot pound of torque out of it but uh, top end the turbos are just out of flow out of, out of puff choked up um, and they are only little turbos, and I spoke to the customer about exactly what they are. And it turns out they're sort of a, a Chinese T3 turbo, which are only good for just over 300 horsepower each. So to get just over 600 for two of them is about right. Um, it's probably a turbo that's too small for the size of the engine, and really you'd want something that's 400 horsepower, or at least 350 horsepower per side, to get somewhere in the sort of 700, 800 horsepower range with an engine this size. But uh, given the entire turbo kit cost him 700 pounds, you really can't complain that you've gained over 200 horsepower of stock for 700 quid's worth of turbo kit. Now, the only question is being Chinese turbos, will they be reliable? Um, he says he's had them taken apart and balanced properly, so hopefully they'll, they'll last, but we'll soon see. So we've done all our work in EFI. Um, the only things we had to do really is build a, a volumetric efficiency fuel, fuel map. Um, so if we go down to airflow here, they haven't really got a VE table as such in here. They've got a virtual VE table. Oh, my cable's not plugged in. And so we have to build this surface and then generate the coefficients which create this surface because they don't actually have a VE map. Um, other things, obviously I've mentioned the injectors and stuff we have to do to get them to work properly. We've tuned the spark table. Torque control required a bit of work. So there's a few limiters in here. And obviously the torque limiters are expecting a car that makes 400 foot pounds or whatever it is. And uh, initially, when you add boost, the car accepts the boost and then uh, retires the time by 20 degrees, trying to keep the torque down to factory. So some work in the torque model was done. But other than that, using a, a factory ECU and EFI Live, we managed to basically complete the project. The car fuels properly, boosts properly. Um, so yeah, it's good to go. Anyway, I, I would hope to do another one soon. Maybe some bigger turbos, something like a pair of 28s on there, I think would be really interesting to do. From my research is the LSs can take quite a bit of boost in stock form, you know, 10, 12 PSI quite happily. So I'd like to see one with some bigger turbos on, but uh, it's been a good experience. And uh, if anyone else wants any uh, GM sort of LS tuning in the UK and wants to use factory ECUs, we can cater for you. You can see here, we can do turbos, superchargers, NA, whether it's an LS1, 2, 3, whatever. Get in touch and we can probably help you out. All right, guys, well, that's it for this time. Thanks for watching. Uh, if you want any more specific videos on different tuning tools or tuning techniques, uh, drop a comment below and I'll see what I can do for you. But until next time, cheers.